So in this video, I'm going to take a quick pit stop from, you know, learning anything new in the tutorials. And we're going to actually go over how to fully launch a campaign with the least amount of tools possible. Like we're not going to do anything fancy. We're going to keep it super, super, super simple. And, um, I guess we'll we'll have fun doing it. So I uh, wanted to show a campaign where we're going to try to invest. Uh, no, we are going to try to get a meeting with managing directors, principals, um, CEOs, investment analysis analysts at venture capital firms that want to invest in SaaS businesses. And so we're going to do a little bit of Apollo filtering, and then we will, uh, you know, pull out some people clean up the list, load it into smart lead, and we would be able to launch this campaign. So what we need to be able to do with this copywriting, we're just doing, I saw you were a title at company name and wanted to reach out. Are you looking to invest in software companies doing 20% month over month uh, growth for the past 14 months at a high level? August 22 revenue was 250K, September is 3.2, NPS of 7.9, churn under 12%. We're looking to a raise that would help expand the engineering team and double down in growth channels that are already working for us, namely outbound and organic content. Would this be interesting enough to discuss on a Zoom sometime? And then email two, we also just raised from Hubs HubSpot and they would be willing to go over their projections for our venture with you as well. And maybe, I don't know, like we this, this could honestly be anything, but it's like whatever uh, venture capital firm you've also raised money from, um, you want to just use that as social proof. So this is a completely fake company. There's nothing true in this email this is a complete like makeup but anyway this is how we would launch this campaign so first we're going to open up apollo we don't need to use the company section at all for this we're going to use the filters here first so the people we're going to be searching for we want to search for investment analyst um and we can actually just do analysts in general because once we do the filters um, they don't actually have to have investment in their name. It's, it's going to be fine. And then, so investment analyst is like the lowest person on the totem pole we're going to talk to. We really want to be talking to the managing directors. So then we'll do president, principal. So see how I'm typing in uh, all of these and it's kind of going slow. If you use ChatGPT to just create a comma separated list of the titles you're looking for, you can copy and paste them um, into here. And so I'm going to put like CEO and then we'll just put managing director and we're going to just be done from there. Okay, cool. Now we're going to move down and we're going to make the location. We're going to make this United States. And then employees, we don't want them to be, well, let's see how this shakes out. We'll go to industry and keywords. And so here's where we're going to get a little fancy. So we're going to go to venture capital and private equity, right? And so now if you were to pull a list of people from, if you were to pull this list, right? They are venture capital firms or they're private equity firms, but it's not going to be your right fit. Like right off of here, see how it says U.S. urology partners. You think they're going to want to invest in a SaaS company? It's not going to happen. So here's where we're going to get fancy. Uh, we'll do venture capital and private equity company keywords. And now we'll put SaaS technology software. Whoops, hopefully it didn't cut off that E. Yeah, software, technology. Um, okay, actually, we've got a great list here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these keywords and see if I can find any good gold in here. We can do B2B. B2B. Let's see if I can find any other good gold. That changed my list a little bit. You always want to see if like it's actually adding anything. See, I could use big data, but I'm pretty sure every time big data is mentioned, SAS is going to be mentioned as well. So we'll try it though. And so we're at 4.4 and let's take it up a notch. Yeah, see, it didn't really change it. And so let's see, early stage. Where was that early stage? Let's check this one. Early stage. No. Well, all right, let's try. Let's try early stage investment because I could see why that wouldn't. Like you wouldn't say software, but you'd say early stage investment. 4.4. Okay, not a huge increase. Let's check these guys. Angel investment, billionaires. I have no 
who is putting billionaires in uh startup acceleration oh so we could put startup Four point five, okay, helped us a little bit, but not that much. Entrepreneurship, let's check. Startup advice, startup funding, startup online events, startup conference, startup con. Yep, yeah. okay, yeah. So we are basically good. I, I don't think we're gonna really be putting in a ton more effort, and we're gonna get a whole lot of better people out of here. So now we'll go to the saved category, and now what we're gonna do is since I already have these leads saved, we can just let it rip from here. So we're just gonna download all these people. Um, and if we didn't want to download all these people and we wanted a max per company, I don't want to reach out to the whole company. We'll put like five right here, right? And so then we'll put 2,300 max people per company is five. And then we'll hit export. And so then what we do is oftentimes we're going to come back to this list. So I save, I, you could save the uh, the list inside of Apollo, they have features for that. So you could keep coming back to the, the lead list. Um, for me, that gets too crazy because then we would have probably like 90 saved lists in Apollo. That gets too crazy. We use the URL and we save that in our project management tool inside of ClickUp. Um, you could either save the search inside of Apollo, or you could bring the URL someplace else. The big thing that we do while this is, this is downloading. The big thing that we do is before we do anything, we create a list. And so we'll be like, um, test. Yeah. So like test for email finding, I'll put it there and I'll hit add to lists. But usually I'll create a new one for the actual list that we're making here though. And then I'll put lists here, advanced settings, exclude, and then we'll do test for email finding. And now I'll take this URL and I'll save it in our project management tool. And then we're done. Um, so the next time we come back to this list, we know that we've already reached out to, you know, the, you know, we have this list and all of these people are fresh and we can reach out to them. Um, so now let's go to our exports, which I guess this is an, another fun way to like show Apollo CSV exports. Okay. So this is still in progress. What's basically going to happen is I'm going to download this list and then I'm going to bring it to debounce for it to get cleaned up for the purposes of this video. I'm going to just download another list to just show you how this happens and then we'll we'll take it from there. And so but please remember that we are going to download this list from Apollo, upload it to Dbounce. Dbounce is going to verify all of these email addresses and then that is the only time that it's safe to upload it to Smartlead. We no before we start any email campaign, you have to run it through an email list cleaner. No matter what, I don't care who you get it from, you got to that's just what you have to do. So, we'll yeah, so remember, you're just going to clean this list. I'm not going to wait for all of these things to happen. We're just going to download this one and then we're going to jump into Smart Lead. So I have a new campaign set up. So I'm just going to call it Test Fundraise Campaign. We have a new campaign set up. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our leads. So we'll hit Apollo Contact Export and import these leads for us. Okay, now we are given these options. None of these matter for us in this at this point, so we're just gonna hit save. So now we're able to map our fields over here. What we need to make sure of is that all of the fields that we're gonna use in our campaign are mapped inside of Smart Lead. So we have the company name mapped, the first name and the last name mapped, and I need their title. So we're gonna jump in here. And we're going to call this a custom field and it's just going to be title because smartly doesn't have it. Then we also want to make sure that their website, I mean, no, not their website, their email address is in here too. And so we'll hit this and we'll hit email. So now title, company name, first name. Those are the only things that we need. So now we'll hit save and next. See this number of retail locations, we don't actually need this. Um, you could keep it because we're never going to use it, but we don't actually need it. So we're going to delete it. So we'll hit save and next. 296 leads were not imported. This usually is because they're like blank or something. So we'll upload this like blank as far as the CSV file is blank. Or no, actually in Apollo, they'll give you blank emails if they don't have an email address. So that's probably why. So then we will save this. And it's great. Okay. Blocked email for some reason. I have them on my do not contact list. Now we're going to stage our campaign. So very quickly, 
we're just going to copy and paste our stuff in here. So we're going to say investment question, then first name, title, blah, blah, blah. So here's the most important part. We're going to type all of this in. What we need to make sure is that first name is actually mapped as a custom variable. There's nothing more important when you're setting up your campaigns than getting your custom variables correct. It would be wildly embarrassing to legitimately send like this, like, like that to somebody in an email campaign. So the way we ensure that it's 100% correct is we just open up the bracket and we select it ourselves. First name. Okay, so that's exactly how it was. Title. Hmm. That doesn't look like a fit. How are we going to do this? Title. There we go. Company name. Now what does this one look like? Company name. Boom. Now we have that one. And now it's all set. And I'm going to say thanks for the time. Eric. Great. Now we're going to add a step. And we're going to hit email. And so I usually wait three to five days. We'll put that in here as well. Uh, one thing, if I don't mention it anywhere else in the course, this is not a proper signature. Whenever we're doing signatures, you want to do like Eric Noslowski, founder, growth engine X, and then you must include a full business address in the signature in order to be compliant in the United States. Um, that is a must. And then you also need to use an unsubscribe. So my feeling on unsubscribes, and maybe I should do a full module on this, is um, I find it crazy that people want unsubscribe links because the first thing that you're told in email is that you should never click a link from an email that you've never gotten before. And so I think somebody would be able to take down like Ford Motor Company or Apple or like General Motors just by like sending emails that looked like sales emails and then just have people click the unsubscribe link and like hack them. However, that works. I don't know. So I, from a principal standpoint, we don't send them as links because I, no one should be like emailing as should be like clicking on these links. And so um, what we send because you need a way for them to opt out. So a clear way to opt out is if you say, if this email is not relevant to you, just let me know and I won't email you again. And so then we like you put that in and like you're still telling them this is how you get off the list. Right. And so I know this is kind of a gray area, but like. I, I don't want people to be clicking on like links from emails that they've never gotten. That's just crazy to me. So anyway, now we set up a new step. We wait for three days in between. And now we have this email over here. And so now we're going to copy and paste this in. Here's a mistake. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when we put that in. Right. So we're going to hit save and next. And we're going to set up our campaign. So we'll pick our sending accounts. And I'll just be like, Eric. Noah Slowski. Okay, great. And so these are our sending accounts. Oh, I guess some of them need to warm up. Forgot about that. So these are our sending accounts. We'll save these. And then we'll hit our campaign schedule. New York. I like to send every 13 minutes so we can get 41 out. Um, really, it's like 11 that gets us like 50 out. And we'll put it to like 250 per day. Tomorrow just so happens to be Columbus Day. I could sit here and be like, all right, I want this to launch on Tuesday, right? Hit save, save and next. This is okay, great. And so now we can look at our campaign. The biggest thing we want to check for is to make sure all of our custom variables are working. So what I pop between is like the copywriting and the final review to make sure everything's working. So first name, first name, title, title, company name, company name. Great. And then we want to do it for the next one. So we look at email too. Oh, look, that's blank. Why is that blank? We go back. Why is it blank? Oh, because this is capital F I R S T underscore, but it needs to be lowercase f. Whoops. So we go in and we edit that. Whoops. I got rid of that. Hit save and next. Boom. And we'll go to email too. And now we've got the name. So the other thing I just checked for is like to make sure that everything makes sense, right? So if it's Westlake Pro, okay, great. George, George. Ken, Ken. Amar, Amar. Easy. Who does? Okay, perfect. Bill. See, but there's no Bill, but it's B Taylor. And their last name's Taylor. So that makes sense. Miravast, Miravast. Oh, the O'Farrell Charter School. I wonder how they qualified for this. That's crazy. 
But anyway, this so this is a problem when you have no other tech um, and you're just using just Apollo uh, is like sometimes these things are going to come up. But anyway, we'll just keep checking. And so then we're good. So now all I'd have to do is we've passed the check. Everything's working. We can just hit schedule campaign and we would be able to launch this. And so I hope this gives you like a quick overview of how easy it would be to launch campaigns. Um, and we'll show much more complicated stuff later on. But see, some mistakes that we're going to have in here is like the company names aren't going to be clean. The titles might be crazy. See how it says you, you I saw you were a CEO. Like you got to say the CEO. But in Clay, we usually solve that. But there's not really a way to solve that um, in Smartly by itself right here. The other thing is that school came in, right? And so if I had like a full tech stack that we'd be able to use, um, Crunchbase has information on what types of companies venture capital firms have invested in in the past. And we would use that filter inside of Crunchbase to say like, I want people who have invested in SaaS in the past, grab that company list, upload that list to Apollo, find the contacts, and then use Clay to like fix all of the, the stuff here. But at a high level, this is how you would be able to launch a campaign um, and just get something going. Um, and then we'll work on much more advanced stuff. So congrats, like we got through basically the first big part of, of the course. You can now launch your own campaign.